This presentation will address groups experiencing health inequities with a specific focus on people in rural and remote areas. The syllabus suggests that students learn about Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and also one other group experiencing health inequities and we have chosen people in rural and remote areas. This presentation will assist you in your research and analysis of people in rural and remote areas, particularly the nature and extent of health inequities, the sociocultural, socioeconomic and environmental determinants, and the roles of individuals, communities and governments in addressing the health inequities. Rural and remote areas are defined as those areas outside major cities. You can clearly see on this map that there is quite a large proportion of the population living in rural and remote areas. You can see that there is a large proportion of the country that is considered very remote. In fact, the majority of Australia would be considered very remote. And there are only small pockets in the country that are actually considered major cities, with the rest dominated by remote, outer regional and inner regional. 26% of people in New South Wales live in rural and remote areas. And you can see again the breakdown is quite similar to the national statistics. What's, sig what's significant with this particular diagram is that you can actually see some areas that are considered very remote, such as Cobar, remote, such as Broken Hill, out of regional, places like Dubbo and Moree, inner regional, Wagga Wagga, Orange, Bathurst, and Goulburn, and major cities, obviously Sydney, Newcastle, and Wollongong. Remote areas of Australia are disproportionately populated by Indigenous Australians. You can see that 1% of the ATSI population is in major cities and this is compared with 45% in very remote areas and 16% in remote areas. So rural and remote areas have a large proportion of ATSI people. And we know from our study already on ATSI peoples that they have a large health gap when compared to the rest of the population. So people in rural and remote areas have higher rates of mortality and disease and a greater presence of risk factors. The nature and extent of health inequities refers to the nature firstly being what are the health inequities and the extent being how severe. When we compare major cities with rural communities, Life expectancy in major cities is higher than those in rural communities. Rural communities have a high rate of smoking, they have a higher rate of alcohol consumption, they generally have lower levels of income and education, they are more likely to be affected by natural disaster, but there are some positives to living in rural and remote areas, such as wide open spaces, fresh air, the potential for access to fresh food, and also a greater sense of community. The daily smoking comparison between rural and remote areas and major cities is quite significant. Up to 26% in rural and remote areas are daily smokers compared with around 15% in major cities, and this has major implications for diseases such as cardiovascular disease and cancer, which are higher in rural and remote areas. Risky drinking is also an issue in rural and remote areas, with up to 31% in very remote areas, compared to 19% drinking at risky levels. There is also a much higher suicide rate for those in rural and remote areas compared to major cities. Access to services is a major issue for those in rural and remote areas because of their geographic isolation. They have less access to hospitals, specialists and doctors, and they may also have less access to general health messages. The nature of health inequities can be summed up in this table. You can see that those in rural and remote areas are more likely to smoke, 
be obese, drink alcohol, be less active, have high cholesterol, and they're more likely to have a risky occupation. In summary, you can see that the nature of health inequities includes isolation, lack of access to health services such as GP, specialists, hospitals, and health media messages, a lower life expectancy which decreases with remoteness, high mortality from diseases such as CVD and cancer, high mortality from injury in general, particularly traffic accidents, more likely to have risky occupations in mining and agriculture, high levels of depression, poor dental health, low SES, and more likely to smoke and drink at risky levels to be obese and be sedentary. The extent of health inequities includes a really high rate of mortality, morbidity, and a greater presence of risk factors. Such chronic diseases as CVD, cancer, injury, diabetes, and obesity are all at high levels for those in rural and remote areas. I encourage you to check out the latest statistics to determine the extent of the health inequities for rural and remote communities provided by your teacher. Sociocultural, socioeconomic, and environmental determinants. The sociocultural determinants include high levels of distress and pressure when working on the land, despair and hopelessness due to lack of opportunities, a culture of alcohol consumption, more likely to be pushed into stereotypical gender roles, for example, males working on the land, distress and mental disorders due to lack of opportunity and natural disaster, and of course, the high ATSI population. All of these factors are social cultural determinants that may impact on the health of rural and remote communities. Socioeconomic determinants include lower average gross household income, more likely to be in manual labour, working on the land, for example, mining, agriculture, unemployment higher and fewer opportunities, less likely to complete year 12, and fewer educational opportunities in general, specifically tertiary education. These are all socio-economic determinants. They relate to income, employment, and education, and they can all impact on the health of people in rural and remote communities. Environmental determinants include poorer living conditions due to the harsher environment, inaccessible mainstream health services, for example, GP specialists and emergency care, hazardous occupations, as mentioned previously, in mining and agriculture, may need to travel long distances to access employment or health services, Inadequate provision of health infrastructure, access to screening, for example, may not be as accessible as it is in major cities, and lower access to health care, GP specialists and emergency departments. Living in remote areas, overall less access to health promotion messages, and poorer roads and less enforcement of safety laws, which could increase the risk of traffic accidents. The roles of individuals, communities and governments in addressing health inequities Individuals have roles to play. Individuals in the community include GPs, community members, community leaders, members of parliament, health specialists and teachers. They all play a role in educating, encouraging others to participate and empowering others. But generally, community members have a role to participate in education programs and other programs that are put forward by the community and the government. An example of individual doctors influencing the community is this initiative which is put forward by the Rural Health Workforce Australia. These particular doctors have told their stories to try and influence and persuade other doctors to practice in rural and remote areas. This potentially could increase the amount of doctors that practice in rural and remote areas, increasing their access. The role of community in addressing health inequities Communities have a role to play in empowering members of their community, liaising with and lobbying the government for better outcomes for rural and remote areas. School communities have a role to play in delivering quality health education and sporting clubs also have a role to play in encouraging a healthy lifestyle. The Good Sports Program is a great example of an initiative which is run by the Australian Drug Foundation which promotes healthy sporting environments to try to promote healthy behaviours such as safe drinking levels, 
and avoiding drug use, particularly for young people. Schools have a role to play in delivering quality, healthy messages and education to young people so that they can avoid drug use, drinking at risky levels, and seek assistance and support when they need it. The New South Wales Rural Doctors Network is an example of rural doctors working together to support each other in their roles as doctors in rural areas. The 13th National Rural Health Conference is another example of the community coming together to try to formulate strategies to help rural and remote communities achieve better health outcomes for their people. The role of governments in addressing health inequities. One of the great government initiatives is the Royal Flying Doctor Service, which provides a 24-hour emergency service to those in rural or very remote areas. Primary and community health care clinics at remote sites are provided. So that means GPs are provided. Doctors and nurses and remote consultations by telephone and radio for those in very remote locations and the provision of medical chests containing extensive pharmaceutical and medical supplies. The Medical Specialist Outreach Program provides improved access to specialist service services in rural and remote areas in Australia. The National Rural and Remote Health Infrastructure Program is a competitive grant program which allows rural and remote communities to bid for funding for essential health infrastructure such as hospitals and equipment. The Rural Women's GP Service is another government initiative which funds the travel of female GPs to eligible communities in all states and the Northern Territory to conduct general practice clinics. This enables women to consult a female GP about a range of issues. This is also open to men and children as well. It increases the access to GPs for those in very rural areas and particularly women. The Rural Australia Medical Undergraduate Scholarship Scheme is another government initiative which encourages rural students to take on tertiary education in the medical field and encourage them to remain in rural communities and deliver back to their communities. Again, this would increase access to health services and GPs and provide a greater number of GPs for rural and remote areas, which is a big issue at the moment. We've also got the Rural and Regional Health Australia Government Department, which really is responsible for health decision making for rural and remote areas and deciding on funding initiatives and health promotion campaigns. It's funded by the Australian Government and provides a number of support services for rural and remote communities. Thank you very much for listening.